party, 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 party. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again, and today we're going to be talking about why miners make money, even more money sometimes, when the market is down. Now, obviously, we've had a little bit of a dip this week thanks to the tweet from Elon regarding Bitcoin and power. If you'd like a talking head video on that, let me know in the future and we'll get into it. But today, we're really going to be focusing on why miners make more money in some cases when, of course, the market is down. Now, right after a word from our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people alike on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and even cryptocurrency. As a content creator and cryptocurrency enthusiast, Skillshare offers me the tools to sharpen my videography skills with classes like Video on a Budget, Prepare for Your Shoot Without Breaking the Bank, and for cryptocurrency, Accounting 101, Accounting Rules for Crypto and Bitcoin. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Welcome back. So there's the very obvious thing here going on where when the market goes down, miners appear to be making more money. They're, they're mining more Ethereum, for example. We're going to be using Ethereum as an example. And the investors are obviously losing money. That's why it's always better, in my opinion, to be mining, at least until it, while it's optional, right? as opposed to basically buying and holding any currency. In fact, also I would never recommend, and this is not financial advice once again, but I would not recommend and nor do I just buy a currency and hold it. If it's not generating revenue, it is not an asset. If it's not an asset, I don't want it. Get it out of my house. We're done. End of story. All right. So the reason for that is basically because if it's not making new stuff, then it has no purpose and it's not going to work for me in the long run. If I'm forced to sit there and hold something, it has no value to me. If it's not usable value, then it's not valuable. It's just it's the way it goes. It's common sense to me. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what happened when Elon tweeted about, of course, Bitcoin power. Well, what happened was people started dumping their Ethereum. Now, and this is right around the time he did it on the 12th. And before that, we actually had settled down in fees going back down to four to five to maybe six ETH. Now, if you guys recall, we were sitting up pretty high and then boom, Elon makes a tweet about Bitcoin that's negative and FUD starts. What happens when FUD starts? Everybody starts trading. What happens when you trade a lot on Ethereum, decentralized exchanges, and you're trying to get your money out? You're increasing the fees. So the faster people are trying to get out, the more money they are willing to spend on the fees getting out. And that thereby increases the block reward. So even though the price of Ethereum and Bitcoin were going down last night, for that brief time, miners were making a lot more money. In fact, it was quite a bit close to when my video released yesterday as well, which is quite fun. But as you guys can see here, right after that happened, all the block rewards were going nuts. We had one for like 15. This is all just ether mine. It was going insane. And then now we settled back down now that everybody has their money out of the exchange. So what's going to happen next, right, is that eventually people will decide to start buying back into Ethereum and miners will start making money again off of the fees. So the principle here or the basic idea is that when people in the market are scared and nervous and trying to get out as quickly as possible, they are increasing the price it costs to get out. They're increasing their fees. And when those fees increase, those fees go to the miners. And that's why miners, when the market is going down, in a lot of cases will still be making more money and possibly even more money than they were when the market was kind of more stable. So anytime there's a big influx or outflux, 
right? You're going to have essentially higher fees, which means you're going to get more block rewards, higher block rewards, mean that the miners make more money. Now there's a second piece to this that a lot of people miss. And it's one that I've tried to explain to people for many, 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 many years. And for some reason it just doesn't get through. Right now is not the time to be buying equipment to mine. The time to buy equipment to mine was when the equipment was cheap. Now I'm going to show you guys something here because I've been working on my taxes for 2020. I have three months here to show you guys real quick. And as far as like tax advice, we've kind of gone over that briefly, but obviously you want to get a tax attorney. What I have here is just the data of what I mined for the last three months or last two months in 2020. And then what that mined coin is worth now, what it was worth when I mined it and what it's worth now. The reason for this is for taxes in the US on mined Ethereum, you have to pay income tax and then everything past that, if you decide to hold it, is what's known as capital gains tax. You guys need to talk to a tax attorney to get more information on that, but we also do have a brief overview of that on this channel. It's called like Bitcoin and taxes or whatever. So let's get into that Excel spreadsheet. So on the 29th is when we have the starting actually of October and we mined 0.7 ETH and the value at the time was 277 US dollars and 74 cents. The value now is $2,705 and 45 cents. And that's right now after the dip. Okay. So then I just basically added in this chart, what it was worth when I mined it and what it's worth now. And we have a total three months of mining on actually less than three giga hash was on like two giga hash. We mined $7,047 and 40 cents worth of Ethereum. However, if we were to hold that all the way to today in May, it would be worth $49,013.55. So what's my point? Well, on two giga hash here, we were doing 0.5 ETH a day, half an ETH a day. Okay. And now you would be lucky to get 0.1 ETH a day on two giga hash a second because of the difficulty of the network, etc. So when could you make the most money? It was when the markets were down. Now that is provided that cryptocurrency goes up in value, but that's kind of the whole idea. It's the risk versus reward. And it's just depending on if you want to take that risk or not. I decided I wanted to take that risk and I posted about it. Let you guys know that I was getting in again back last year. And this is the reason why in two months we basically made, if we held to today, $49,000 off of what was about a $12,000 investment. So, Hopefully you guys kind of see the idea here is not really about going to what to mine all the time and seeing what's most profitable right now. Sometimes you just kind of got to mine when it doesn't look like it's as profitable. Now, if you went even further back from those two months and you went way back when it basically looked like you were losing money mining Ethereum. <laughs> Hope you catch the drift. All right, so that's going to wrap up today's video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.